Hello everyone. Welcome to another experimental physiology video. Till now, we have studied all the properties of cardiac muscle and nervous regulation of the frog's heart. Today we shall discuss effect of acetylcholine on frog's heart. First we shall see recording procedure and then discuss the effects of acetylcholine on heart and its mechanism of action. We shall conclude the session by studying some clinical application of this knowledge. Before we begin, pause the video and try to recall what happens to the heart in response to vagal stimulation and why. Okay, as you might have guessed, vagal stimulation causes stoppage of heart during diastole and it is due to release of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter mainly secreted at neuromuscular junction. It is also released by all the preganglionic autonomic fibers that is both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic fibers and it is the neurotransmitter secreted by the postganglionic parasympathetic nerves. In addition, few sympathetic cholinergic fibers also release acetylcholine as their neurotransmitters. Apart from these fibers, acetylcholine is also released by many nerve fibers in the brain. Since the vagus is parasympathetic nerve, on stimulation it releases acetylcholine and causes heart to stop in diastole. Now let's study how to record the effect of acetylcholine on frog's heart. First, electrical circuit is prepared by taking battery, nipsamer, EMTM and tap key in the primary circuit and secondary coil, secondary key and electrodes in the secondary circuit. You may wonder, what's the need of electrical circuit in this experiment? We can directly pour acetylcholine on the heart and note the changes, isn't it? Yes, that's the simplest way. But the procedure varies across the institutes. To identify the effect of unknown drug on the heart, we used to check effect of vagal and crescent stimulation before and after application of the drug. It assists to draw the proper conclusions. How? That we'll discuss later in the video. Before we proceed, kindly read the disclaimer. And let me tell you that these experiments were recorded almost 18 years back purely for academic purpose. Okay, once the background preparation is ready, we dissect the heart and both the vagi. Then the frog is mounted on the board and the heart is attached to the lever and a normal cardiogram is recorded for sufficient duration. Then any one vagus is stimulated briefly. It stops the heart momentarily in diastole. Once the cardiogram resumes to normal, effect of recent stimulation is also recorded. It also leads to stoppage of heart in diastole, followed by gradual recovery. To know the details about the vagus and crescent stimulation, refer to my earlier video on nervous regulation of frog's heart. Link is available in the description below. So after recording these two effects, we slowly add acetylcholine on the ventricle with the help of dropper and this event is marked on the recording. Here we have used 1 in 1 lakh concentration of acetylcholine in ringus solution and as you can note immediately on addition of acetylcholine heart has slowed down and its force of contraction has also decreased. This effect is recorded for some time and then the vagus is stimulated again. You can observe that heart stops for a while in diastole and recovery is prolonged. Now the crescent is stimulated and once again heart stops in diastole and recovers slowly. So this completes the recording part. Here is the ideal tracing of this experiment where you can note decrease in heart rate as well as force of contraction after adding acetylcholine. 
In some institutes, this effect is quantified by noting the changes in the heart rate before and after the application of acetylcholine and also by measuring changes in the force of contraction. So first let's discuss how acetylcholine causes these effects or in other words, what is the mechanism of action of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine mediates its actions via nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Nicotinic receptors are present on skeletal muscles and autonomic ganglia whereas muscarinic receptors are found on cardiac muscles, smooth muscles and various glands innervated by cholinergic fibers. Since we are studying effects of acetylcholine on heart, let's concentrate only on this aspect. In heart, acetylcholine acts on both pacemaker cells as well as cardiac muscles. They have M2 type of muscarinic receptors. As acetylcholine binds with these receptors, it increases the membrane permeability for potassium ions. This results in potassium efflux leading to development of hyperpolarization. Thus, acetylcholine decreases excitability, conductivity and contractility and exerts all the negative effects on the heart. Decrease in heart rate is termed as negative chronotropic effect. Decrease in force of contraction is termed as negative inotropic effect. Decrease in excitability and conductivity are termed as negative basmotropic and negative dromotropic effects respectively. These effects are temporary and reversible. Ok, now let's see the role of Vegas and Crescent stimulation in identifying the unknown drug. Usually the syllabus includes four drugs, acetylcholine, adrenaline, nicotine and atropine. Recording the effects of vagal and crescent stimulation before the application of drug confirms that both the preganglionic as well as postganglionic vagal fibers are working normally. Then we add the drug. Now if the drug exerts negative effects that is decrease in heart rate and force of contraction, it may be either acetylcholine or nicotine. Now after this, if the inhibition is present in response to vagus as well as crescent stimulation, the drug must be acetylcholine because external acetylcholine acts in the same way as that of natural acetylcholine secreted by the nerve endings and it does not block any receptors. But in case of nicotine, heart does not stop in response to vagal stimulation but stops due to crescent stimulation, indicating that nicotine acts on the nicotinic receptors on the autonomic ganglia and blocks them. By stimulating crescent, we stimulate postganglionic fibers and acetylcholine release from these fibers act on M2 receptors on the heart and inhibits it. So this helps in identifying the location of action of drug as well as identifying the unknown drug. Now let's see the clinical application of this knowledge. You must have studied that excessive vagal stimulation causes bradycardia or even sometimes momentarily heart can stop leading to fainting. It can be treated with atropine, a muscarinic antagonist that is muscarinic receptor blocker. As M2 receptors are blocked by atropine, despite vagal stimulation, acetylcholine cannot act on the heart to induce bradycardia. Thus, understanding acetylcholine's effect on the heart aids in managing such conditions. That's all for today. Thank you for joining in and see you in the next video. Are you new to my channel? Then please subscribe it and press the bell icon to stay updated about the new releases. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for joining in and see you in the next video.